This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Soil Science playlist, and today we're looking at soil colloids and colloidal particles, how they form, how they form in solution, the types, the function, and the processes that happen because of these soil colloids in regards to CEC, which is cation exchange capacity in the soil, which is soil chemistry, uh, soil fertility, soil growth, and looking at their relationship to soil chemistry. What are soil colloids? Now the term word colloid just means a very small particle. It is in relation to biology and earth science and geoscience in terms of a particle that's in nature that is less than 0.01 millimeters or less than one micrometer. So it's very, very tiny. Now, these colloids can be broken down from larger particles, larger substances. For example, you have rocks, weathered rocks, erosion, and you can break down these inorganic materials to form smaller particles and the tiniest particles we get are called the colloids. Now, in terms of types, there are two main types. You've got inorganic and you've got organic. So the inorganic, that is basically the mineral particles. And in soil, the smallest mineral particle that we have, or it's broken down, that is in existence, is the clay mineral, now clay particles. So the most Common one is kaolinite, but there are four main four main types of clay minerals based on different organizations of their silica, oxygen, tetrahedral, or their polyhedral structure. And they are basically the, the end result of all of the weathering of the materials to form these clay minerals. Then you have organic colloids. Now, organic colloids come from plant material, detritus, breaking down decomposing material in the O and A horizon, and you have the formation through different stages of decomposition, which creates humus. Now, humus is the final stage of decomposition, and if you can't decompose that any further, and the small traces of this humus is the organic colloids. Now, both of the colloids, both inorganic and organic, are present in solution. Now, it's not a perfect solution, so they can also be called a micelle because they are little bits or aggregates within the solution. So they're, they're transported within the solution, usually water, through leaching and percolation in the soil, and it contains these little particles of either the clay minerals or the humus. So we can break down the organic in just humus, but the inorganic, you get these different types of clay minerals. You've got the crystalline. So when you hear crystalline, you think mineral, but these are all minerals. So crystalline silicates. So you have the oxygen silicon in the chemical formula. You have the amorphous silicate, which means it's a non-crystalline shape. So the amorphous could be a different shape. Um, crystalline comes in a designated pattern of the elements and the bonds, whereas the amorphous could be just a generalized shape. And we also have the non-silicate, which is the iron and aluminium or aluminum oxides, which are also present in certain soils. So the soil colloids, they are present in the soil. As you see the soil profile here, you have the, the O and A horizon at the top with a surface horizon with the vegetation, and you have the root system, and you have this nice bedrock down here, the C horizon, B horizon, and this larger A and E horizon. And the, e, and the O is this very dark based on organic material. So the B horizon, that is the zone of accumulation. And the E horizon is the zone of alluviation, which means that the process of leaching and percolation of minerals and ions and components out of the E horizon to be dumped in the B horizon right here, which is a lighter color. So it's less organic material as you go down in depth. So the soil colloids, they are present as a larger structure up here in the O and A horizon. But when you get the physical or mechanical weathering, and then you get the percolation of water, you get that an instant chemical weathering reactions with the water 
and hydrolysis and oxidation reduction and you get the chemical weathering going through the percolation and the water transports and translocates all these particles both organic which is the humus and inorganic which is the mineral particles the clays down deeper into the b horizon right here and it accumulates and you get this large amount of soil colloids in the b horizon so what do these soil colloids actually do so once you form them through the chemical reactions between both primary minerals and secondary minerals a secondary mineral can be formed through chemical reactions within the soil so you add in those basic elements and you start to combine them to make secondary elements and minerals within the soil so these colloids can be these tiny particles of humus and the clay minerals they can be attached to other larger particles within the soil maybe that's a larger organic material a root nodule perhaps or it could also be attached to a mineral particle like a sand grain or a silt grain in the soil or a part a broken part of the bedrock in the sea horizon perhaps as it gets broken down into the b horizon so it can be attached and then the colloid itself has a very large surface area so it's great for exchanging and transferring elements and ions within the soil it's a good boundary layer of transferring elements and ions within the soil which is perfect for soil fertility and how these colloids can contain and catch nutrients for the plant to take out of the water so the these attached colloids on the particles can be exchanged and moved through ion exchange into the solution water solution in the pores in between the particles and the organic material like the plant roots or other vegetation can take the colloids and take the the nutrients and the elements out of the water that was in solution into the root system of the trees and plants and that's how the vegetation is going to acquire their nutrients and also their water uptake so this colloid is essential for nutrient movement and basically soil fertility so this also works as a buffer so you can buffer the acidity of the soil based on these various elements and ions and nutrients so pH plays a big role in soil chemistry and how the soil functions as a fertile medium for vegetation. The active fraction, that is where you have a small percentage of the soil it are these colloids, a very small percentage, which is chemically active, moving ions and attracting ions and exchanging ions. So that is really plays an important role in, in the fertility of the soil is this movement and exchange of cations because the colloids are very negative and the other other particles are positive so you got this nice balance a micell or micell that is just another term for a colloid or a small particle that does not goes into solution but doesn't doesn't dissolve in that solution it stays in solution and is suspended so you have this diagram showing the two types of colloids you have your organic colloid which is down here with the humus which is usually amorphous kind of shape non-crystalline then you have your clay mineral so clay comes in these thin layers these different types and how they are organized based on their chemical structure but these clay particles and the humus the organic colloids they are both electronegative so on the outskirts on the edge you see this very large surface area now the organic material is way more chemically active than the clay now clay particles yes they are a good colloid for the soil but the organic material that is the key they are way more chemically active with exchanging ions than the clay particles are so but these clay particles and humus they're both negative and all of the various ions and elements within the solution of the water going through leaching through the soil they are all positive they are cations so these are anions in the colloids and that provides a perfect electro attractive force for the cations to attach to these colloids 
and then it can be exchanged and so the uh, calcium can be attracted to the colloid and then the magnesium or sodium can easily be pushed out and exchanged in this cation exchange capacity into the solution for root vegetation to uptake. So this is how it works within the soil, within the B layer and going through different layers. So we're taking down the colloids into the B layer accumulation and that's where we have this CEC and this chemically active fraction of the soil occurring.